Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor, and today we're not painting a door hanger. We're painting a door mat. So um, I've done this once before on here, um, and I shared that I wanted a door mat to match the door hanger hanging on my door and my porch sign. And these can be kind of pricey if you buy one at the store, not to mention you can't like personalize it to your decor. So I have recently figured out that I can uh, laser doormats like this on my Thunder Laser. So that's what I've done. I bought this um, doormat from Hobby Lobby back when they were on sale. Um, and they actually had a better deal on them on Hobby Lobby's website than they did in the store. So what I ended up doing was while I was in the store, I only found one of them on the shelf. And I ended up finding it on their website for even cheaper. And so I bought like 10 of them and went ahead and just had them shipped to my house. And so now anytime I need a door hanger to match my, I mean a door mat to match my door hanger, all I have to do is kind of design it first and then laser etch it. And so that's what I've done. So um, the door hanger hanging on my door, if you guys remember um, when we did this uh, or when we painted the four different ways to do the fall pumpkin design back in August. Hey Pam, hi Carolyn. Um, I did the one that had the peekaboo leopard print on each of the letters. And so that's the one that's currently hanging on my door. So I wanted a little bit of leopard print on my mat and um, you know since it's easier to do that with laser than it is to sit and paint I lasered these leopard print spots on the Thunder laser isn't that cool so essentially these darker spots are just slightly singed if you will like they don't look burnt when you look at them up close they're just a darker color which is really cool um, and then you can't really see it but the shape of the in the middle is three pumpkins side by side so these pumpkins um, on our website, I think they're called the Pumpkin Trio, and it's three pumpkins side by side that have the word thankful running across them. I'm not going to do wor the word thankful, but I am going to paint three pumpkins across the middle of this. Um, but it saves me a little bit of time since the leopard print spots are already lasered on there. Hi, Marie. Hello, Belinda. Uh, Michelle says, how do you never get paint on your shirts? I do sometimes, Michelle, but... Um, I'm just very careful about it, but I do sometimes accidentally get paint on my shirts, but you can get it out using like um, rubbing alcohol or uh, hand sanitizer and like a toothbrush. Just scrub it and it'll come right out. Hi, Pat. Good morning, Becky. Um, let's see. Kelly says, do you think a Glowforge would do a mat? So this mat is 18 inches by 30 inches. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it would. If you've got the Glowforge Pro with the little door on the front, you should be able to feed it through. You just have to do it in sections. I actually did this one, I think, in like three different sections on my um, my Nova 24. Hi, Candice. Hi, Wanda. Good morning. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to use orange and like probably light buttermilk. So the middle pumpkin will be the light buttermilk. I may need to start with it. That way I kind of have, because it's hard to see these lines where the pumpkins are. So we'll just start with that. And I think the way I did this last time was I ended up just squirting the paint directly on the doormat and then spreading it around. I can't remember. But I do remember thinking it took a lot more paint than I thought it was going to take. But just because I'm a little nervous about this, this is only the second time I've ever done this, I'm going to put the paint over in my egg carton to start with. Hi, Brandy. <laughs> hey, Sandy. How are you guys today? Okay, so I'm just going to kind of start with this center section of my pumpkin, and I'm going to kind of just outline it first so I kind of can, can see where, what I'm working with, but as you can see, the paint doesn't go very far when you're using it, so you have to kind of like keep dipping to get the amount of coverage you want, so I think that's probably why the last time I did this, I just squirted the paint directly on there. But since I can't see my pumpkins very well, I thought maybe I would just kind of create the outline for them first. So if you're wanting to do a door hanger like this at home, you could use um, a paintbrush and just sit and kind of sketch out your design first and kind of create the lines for it and then go back in and paint it. You wouldn't have to be able to laser cut your own door hanger or laser etch your own door hanger. Your own door mat. I keep saying door hanger. Um, how do they typically hold up? Do you seal it? Um, I believe, yeah, I forgot about that, but I think the last time I did this, I did seal it with, um, a, a clear spray sealer after I finished painting it. Do you use a pencil to dry out the pumpkins? I, no, I didn't. You can't, pencil would not show up on this. You might could use a Sharpie though. Do you order them plain? 
Yeah, I ordered the doormat plane. It was it, the whole thing looked like this right here. There was nothing on it. Will you sell the doormat with the pattern on it? Eventually, Diane. We're not ready for that yet, but yeah, I do hope to eventually be, be able to offer that. Okay, now that I've got it sketched out, I may just go ahead and start laying this on here as thick as I can, but man, it uses a lot of paint. So you gotta make sure you got enough of the paint you're gonna use to cover, because you have to put it on pretty thick, because it just seeps down in the bristles there. And so I'm like literally scooping the paint up with my paintbrush, and then just trying to smear it, and you kinda have to work in small sections. definitely different than painting on wood and it uses a ton more paint so I have already gone through almost like the entire amount that I squeezed there in my little egg carton and you see I have not gotten very far so that's probably why the last time I did this I started like squirting the paint on in the area that I wanted and then spreading it around where did you purchase your doormat uh, the doormat came from Hobby Lobby. Oh, there's a paint booger. It came from Hobby Lobby, and I bought it on sale. Hobby Lobby puts puts them on sale, I don't know if it's every other week or just once a month. But watch for them to go on sale, and you can order them on their website. Actually cheaper than you can get them in the store. I haven't done this but one time before, so if any of you guys have tips... Feel free to share them with me because I'm learning right along. Kelly's wondering if you seal it first and then paint it and then seal again if it would use less paint. I don't know. It's a good question. But yeah, now I'm wondering if I'm going to have enough of this buttermilk color, which I could switch to white, I guess, and have, do a white pumpkin or make my own buttermilk paint. But yeah, I'm running low on this buttermilk as it is. We'll go ahead and switch to doing this side. Just kind of spread it on there. See how it's not going very far? <laughs> That's the problem is it sinks down in those bristles and then it just doesn't go very far. I did a, a strawberry on the one that I did this past summer and it held up really well. Um, the only reason it started looking rough at all is because my dogs love to lay right on that doormat by the door. And so it started getting dog hair and stuff on it. But uh, like if anybody's got any tips for cleaning these mats and getting like the dog hair and stuff off of them. I mean, I tried like beating it against something or brushing it with something. But you know, it's like these little fibers, the dog hair and stuff gets embedded in it and it's real hard to get it off. A couple of people wonder if a, spell, a sponge pouncer would apply better. We can try it. We can try it. Um, Lisa's done mats and she used house paint. House paint. That probably would work pretty good. Uh -oh. A couple of people are thinking primer might have helped. Maybe. I don't know. Let's try the sponge pouncer method. Mm. It's helping put down like a, a good base coat, but it's definitely not going on very thick and it's soaking up a lot of the paint. But it does seem to be a little, I don't know, maybe a little easier to distribute. But you can see it's definitely not going on very thick. And then I end up with so much of it stuck up in my sponge that it's frustrating. I just think you have to have a ton of paint to do these. There's like not much way around it. So I switched to a larger brush just so this would go a little faster. That little brush felt like it was taking forever. I have seen people use like the writer bottles to kind of draw the design on the on the doormat first and then they kind of just dab it into the into the fibers with a brush. Nicole wants to know if that is painting on that is rough on your brush. Um, no, not really. But I'm not like, I don't know. I'm not being rough on the brush, so maybe not. Tammy suggests <laughs> taking it to the car wash to clean it up. <laughs> Take it to the car wash. I wondered if that would be too rough on it. See, I 
Okay. Yes, I will seal it when I'm done. I definitely don't think I would want to get into painting doormats for a living because this would this is not nearly as satisfying as painting on wood. It just takes too long. And I like instant gratification. And I'm running out of this paint, so we're having a hard time here. Becky said a stenciling brush might help filling in the design because the bristles are stiffer. Maybe. Or spray paint. Spray paint, yeah. It would be harder to keep it, to control the paint with the spray paint, I would think. I'm trying to just go back and kind of fill in some of the areas that look a little sparse. Them just a little bit more dense. All right, that bottle did not last me no time. I thought it had more in it than that, but we've obviously used a lot of paint. Glenda says she sprayed hers with matte sealer before she painted, and it covered a lot easier. Oh, thank you for that. Sprayed with matte sealer. Lori wants to know how you got your pattern on that. Um, so we lasered this pattern on here, and. Um, so I can still barely see the lines for the pumpkins. I'm gonna make my own buttermilk color. So we're putting some white in there. I'm gonna need quite a lot though. So let's go ahead and just be generous with it. And then I'm gonna take some of this tan and add to it. Laura says people even use flex seal on it first. Ooh, okay. I need to write this down so that next time I do this, because I only do this about once a quarter, like this pumpkin will be, like the next time I'll probably do one will probably be end of November when I get ready to do like a Christmas one. So I need to not forget that. All right, I made some more buttermilk. We mixed tan and white together. She switched to a floor cloth for low pile carpet samples due to painting issues and cleaning golden retriever hair out of it. <laughs> oh my. I do have a, one of those like buffalo plaid mats that are made out of a different kind of cloth out there. And so I can probably just throw that in my washing machine. Um, but this kind I'm going to like put on top of it and layer, layer it. I'll definitely try the Flex Seal next time. And you know I walked right by a big display of that Flex Seal stuff at Lowe's last night. I should have just got some. My husband probably has some around here I just don't know about because he loves that kind of stuff. Did you use a stencil for the leopard print? No, the leopard print has been laser etched on the, on the design, so I did it with the Thunder laser. I designed it in Procreate, and then I exported it into my Lightburn software on the Thunder Laser, and did it that way. <laughs> You've done it on vinyl, they cracked after a while. Hmm. Yeah, that's the way I've seen people do it, Callie, with puff paint. I think that's probably gonna be pretty close to good enough. I don't expect it to be completely solid and covered because, I mean, it is a doormat. Carolyn wonders if the fabric medium would allow the paint to spread better. Maybe, I don't know. Mm, and I think I'm gonna, I'm, I may see if it's gonna be, let me do some shading. Let me get like a little bit more of this desert sand color. Cause I did that with my strawberry and it looked really cute. Do it kind of around the edge of the pumpkin. Just getting it on the corner of my brush and spreading it around like the, I don't know if it's even gonna show up enough. What size is your thunder? My thunder is the Nova 24. 
So I had to cut this or like laser this in about three, three different parts. Like I split it into three cut jobs. Okay, we're gonna let that dry and move on to the orange. And I know I have a bunch of this color orange, so we're just gonna use it, Canyon Orange. I have a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do like I did last time and kind of outline it first before I start filling it in. Let me go back to my smaller brush here. Chalk paint works well, that's good to know. I don't have very much chalk paint around here. So now I'm switching to orange. Let's see, it kind of goes up. And I'm just kind of tracing. I can see the outer outline of the pumpkin on here, but you know, you could you could always like trace a pumpkin or something if you wanted to with like maybe a Sharpie. You could use that kind of as your guide to draw it on here. Or just use a little bit of black paint or a writer bottle. I've seen some people use like stencils that they cut on like their Cricut or their Silhouette. So you could do that. <laughs> you want a Thunder Nova, they're pretty great. I love mine. How many PC sisters do we have watching right now? I had something that I wanted to talk to you guys about. If y'all had not heard about it yet, we are doing a Christmas crafting event in Grand Rivers, Kentucky for our Painters Clubhouse members on November 5th. And so if you hadn't heard about it yet, you can go and grab tickets inside your membership area. Um, just log into the Painters Clubhouse where you go to download your templates and watch videos and things like that. And, um, you can buy your ticket. It's gonna be an all day crafting event. We're gonna make at least five different crafts that day. We're providing breakfast and lunch and possibly even dinner too. We haven't completely decided on what the dinner plans are. But in Grand Rivers, Kentucky, there is a, um, a festival of lights behind the Patty's restaurant that you can go and walk through that evening and look at the lights after dinner. And so that'll be a fun thing to do together and we can craft together all day. It's gonna be a great time for crafting and fellowshipping with your Painters Clubhouse sisters. <laughs> Mindy's a PC sister. Thank you for the stars, guys. Ray has a Nova 35. She just needs to learn to fix. Yes, okay, so Ray, um, I'm trying to remember what my settings were on when I lasered this. I think it was like 500 speed and only like 35 power to do these leopard spots. So just kind of play around with it. Start with like a lower power than you think you're gonna need and kind of do like a little test spot or something and then kind of see how it goes. Cause I don't know if different, door, different brands of doormats would laser differently, but I definitely wouldn't just take my Take what I use and completely go with that because you just never know if it's going to work the same with what you're doing. Also, if you have a different size laser, your the power of your laser might be stronger. And so it might be different settings for yours. Where is it at? Again, I missed it. Sandra, are you talking about the event we're doing? The Jingle and Mingle event with Painters Clubhouse is in Grand Rivers, Kentucky. How far are you from Grand Rivers? Roxy's nine hours away. What about everybody else? How far are you? Make a road trip. Find a buddy. Take your, bring your sister, your cousin, your friend, whoever. You can buy a ticket for, for a friend if you want to, but you do have to be a Painters Clubhouse member to purchase a ticket. But if you're a Clubhouse member, you can buy a ticket for a friend or somebody if they want to come with you and do this. Gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I can't tell you all the crafts that we're gonna do, but I will say we are doing a Christmas door hanger. And it will be unlike any other door hanger I've ever taught anywhere, really. It'll be unique because um, we're using like some methods and things on it that you guys probably haven't tried before. And then we're doing like a ceramic Christmas tree. Now I'm actually not teaching the ceramic Christmas tree. Um, a lady who runs a ceramic boutique here locally will be coming and teaching it. 
and I'm having her teach it because she knows some really cool methods that you can do on ceramics that I don't even know about. And so she's going to be coming and teaching us how to do that. So I'll probably sit down and paint during that class too just to learn how to do it. It'll be fun. Okay, I've got a good base coat. So the orange is not nearly as thick as the white, but that's okay. I really think it's going to, it looks cute regardless. So I'm just going to kind of like put just a little bit more in some places. Maybe I'll switch to this larger brush too. Kind of thicken it up. I wonder if watering the paint down helps too, because my brush is really wet. So that seems to be spreading a little better. It's like getting a base coat on there. Let's try that. Let me get a wet, real wet brush with some orange paint. It does seem to be going on there a little better. What do you think? Hi, Rita. Three hours and 25 minutes. That's close enough, Stephanie. Come see me. <laughs> Debbie says seven hours away. That's a good road trip. That, that would be a good long drive, but I would still love to see you. See you. No, we're not going to have a virtual option to this one. It'll be in-person only. But we're going to do like a tacky Christmas sweater contest. So if you've got tacky Christmas attire, definitely wear it. Uh, and we'll have prizes for the winners of those. Um, I thought about even doing like an ornament exchange. So if you want to pick out an ornament and bring it and like do like a secret Santa sort of thing to another clubhouse sister, you could exchange ornaments. We'll be having some really good food. I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, I'm feeling much better about this. That white was really difficult. I don't know, if maybe because it's, it's such a light color, covering the tan was hard, but this, this orange is working out way better. Stephanie says she wants to come so bad, but she's scared and it's out of her comfort zone. Oh, why are you scared? Or is it because you're scared to like drive that far? I know some people are uh, nervous to drive that far by themselves or something. I wondered if that was it. I'm adding a little bit of red to the outside of these pumpkins, kind of as a, like, shading. Can the ornaments be handmade? Uh, sure, yeah, the ornaments could be handmade. They're a crafty bunch. They certainly could. If you're scared to drive alone, just find somebody who will come with you. Find somebody to travel with. Or maybe find somebody who lives nearby that you could, that is coming. That's maybe a clubhouse sister who only lives maybe 30 minutes or an hour from you. You could meet up at a central location and then drive the rest of the way together. Let's do a little bit of yellow as like a highlight on these pumpkins. We did red sort of as a low light around the bottom edges. But I'm going to pick up a little bit of this sunset gold, whatever it's called, and do it at the tops of these pumpkins. I feel like it's really easy shading on these doormats because it just blends so easily. It's really cool. All says it's really cute. Thank you. Okay, my pumpkins are looking pretty good. What did Stephanie say was her reason? She was nervous. She hasn't answered yet. But oh. Tammy answered her and said, you'll know us once you get there. Yeah. Yeah. If it's, if it's a nervous to come and be amongst people that you don't know and feel like you're the only one in the room who doesn't know everybody, um, we're all family. Once you get there, you're going to feel like you're with family. Oh, gosh, yes. 
<laughs> Aaliyah seconded that. It was the same way when, at our event in um, Dallas. Like, we had lots of ladies who traveled there completely by themselves, and by the end of the first day, they felt like they had met their soul sisters, and they were exchanging phone numbers and emails, and they're like, we've got to meet up again before the next one, you know, and they're making friends. So, um, that could be you. It, you don't have to feel alone. Everybody who's coming is probably a little on the nervous side, just like you are, and so... You know, you're going to meet each other and make fast friends. All right, now I'm getting a brown to do my stems. Let's see. Stems are kind of like right here. I should have just lasered these stems on because they're almost the same. The brown is almost the same color as those uh, leopard spots. Yes, so if you want to get a ticket, you have to be a clubhouse member or come with a clubhouse member. Um, but the clubhouse members can log in to where they normally download their templates or watch their videos to the clubhouse membership site. Log in there. You can't miss it. It's right there at the top. It's called the Jingle and Mingle event, and it's happening November 5th in Grand Rivers, Kentucky. It's a one-day event. We're going to craft together all day. Enjoy breakfast, lunch, and lunch together, probably dinner too. And then we're going to go and look at the Christmas lights. And we can, we can go shopping in the area. There's like some awesome gift shops and things you can go walk around. It's going to be a blast. I did this because right after our Southern Adornments Live event that we did in Dallas, everybody um, bought tickets to the next event, which is going to be in Destin, in 2023, September 2023. And I'm like, that's a whole year away. Like, I miss these people already and I want to play in another one. And so, instead of planning another Southern Adornments Live event, I was like, hey, we'll just do like a clubhouse event and meet up with our clubhouse sisters and it'll kind of like scratch that itch for, uh, for now. Stephanie says she knows she just needs to do it and take a little vacation. Yes, you do. And you will not regret it. I'm trying to decide what color green I want to do on this. I kind of want to go go bright and do like a crazy bright green, but I don't know. We'll try this Hauser light, meat, light green. Yeah, sometimes we just have to do this stuff for ourselves and plan to go to events like this, even though we're scared, because you know that at the end of the event, you're going to be like, I'm so glad I did this. Marlene says it'd be neat to put your last name initial on the white pumpkin. Oh, that would be cool. Are you using outdoor acrylics? No, I'm just using regular old craft acrylic paint. Deco Art Americanas. That's what, that, that's what I've got the most of. I've got so much of this stuff around here that I may as well use it. Will you do the laser doormats to sell? In the future, we do hope to be able to offer the laser doormats for sale, but we're just not ready for that just yet. First of all, I need to find a supplier where I can get these doormats, um, you know, in abundance so that we don't ever run out. Will Destin have a virtual option? Uh, yes, we will have a virtual option for Destin, just like we did with um, Dallas. So, if you're not able to attend, you could at least get a virtual ticket, but we're not going to start selling virtual tickets until um, much closer to event time. These little leaves are so much easier to paint because they're so small. Feels like it's not that hard. Oh, Tammy, I'm so glad you decided to do this for yourself. You definitely need a little vacation, and I'm sure your mom would, would think so too. Where did I get the doormat? It's from Hobby Lobby, and I laser etched it myself to create. It was completely plain, and I added the leopard print with the laser machine, and now I'm going back and painting the pumpkins by hand. How did your strawberry mat hold up? Uh, the strawberry mat held up great. 
I actually think it looks good enough that um, I'm going to keep it for next year if I want to put it out next year. I might not put it on the front porch again next year just because I always like to change up my decor. I don't like to do the same thing over and over again. But I could probably put it by the back door and still make use of it. I'm going to do a little bit of shading on my leaves with a darker green. Kind of just down one side of the leaf. I don't know why I thought I could dry this with the hair dryer fast. It's not, it's going to take too long. So we're just going to have to let it air dry. That looks good. Okay. I feel like, I wonder if this still works. I have this laser, this, uh, this, um, rider bottle from way back when. Let me see if it works. Could I paint the leopard print with paint? Could you paint the leopard print with paint? Yes. I just think it would take a long time. So if you've got the patience for it, yes. Okay. I've got this little rider bottle. I think I bought these from Deco Art way back when, and I filled it up with just black acrylic paint. So I'm going to use this to kind of add some details around the edges of the design. I'm literally just kind of drawing it on there. Um, like puff paint. I like ice in a cake. Happy mail. Let's do some happy mail. Comment and let me know. What was my question? Oh, how do you decorate pumpkins? Like, do you paint your pumpkins? Do you carve your pumpkins? Or do you do something else? My kids want to decorate pumpkins. So I'm curious what you guys, what's your tradition? What you usually do? Drop us a comment. We're going to pick somebody random to win um, some happy mail. Would you sell the mat? Would I sell the mat? What do you mean? Like, if I were wanting to make money, would I sell it? Maybe, but to me, it's too much work to do this. I would rather paint and sell door hangers. I'm just doing this for myself, but no, I'm not selling these. You almost have to move quickly with this squeeze paint. Because if it's if you if you move slow and it trails along the little bumps and ridges, it doesn't look as smooth. It's very satisfying though. Alright, who's going to be our Happy Mail winner? Did everybody leave their comment? Our Happy Mail winner is Judy Kane Cherry. Judy Kane Cherry, congratulations. Send us an email with your um, mailing address and I'll send you something in the mail. I'm gonna have to really let this dry or it's gonna mm -hmm. make a mess. But let me hold it up so y'all can see it. You see the pumpkins? Look how cute. What do you think? Would you do a project like this? Did I make it a little less intimidating even though I bumbled my way through it? We did learn a few things. Um, one of the things that was suggested in the beginning, which I'm definitely gonna try next time, is to spray your doormat with like flex seal first or some sort of clear matte sealer so that the paint is easier it doesn't like soak down into the mat as fast so i'm going to try that next time um also i am going to spray this with a sealer afterwards to kind of protect the paint but we're going to let it fully dry i probably won't spray it until tomorrow um, and to answer a couple of quick questions again, and, um, this was a plain doormat from the Hobby Lobby. I lasered the leopard print on it, and then we hand-painted the pumpkins. So after I get this dried and sealed and I put it on my front porch, I'll snap a picture for you guys so you can see what it looks like with all my front porch decor. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. 
Okay, and if you're a Painters Club House member, go grab your Jingle and Mingle tickets right now to hang out with me in Grand Rivers, Kentucky, November the 5th. It's a one-day event just for our Painters Club House members where we're going to make Christmas crafts together all day long. Um, we'll probably eat Christmas cookies. We're going to serve breakfast, lunch, probably dinner, and then we'll walk through and look at the Christmas lights together. It's going to be so much fun. I hope to see you there. All right, y'all. Have a wonderful afternoon. See you next time. Thanks, Linda.